Hi everyone and welcome to this video series on SPSS Made Easy. In this video series, as the name suggests, I'll be going over different aspects of SPSS including how to run statistical analyses. Before I get into SPSS, however, I want to briefly go over the made up data set that we'll be using. And I want to stress, uh, I can't stress enough that it is made up. It's completely hypothetical. I made up the data in it. But we're going to pretend that it's real. So in this made up data set, the dependent variable of interest involves abstinence from alcohol. So what do I mean by that? Well, in this made up data set, we're going to pretend that all of the client, all of the people in the data set are clients who are receiving treatment for alcohol abuse. So the outcome of interest is whether or not they stayed abstinent from alcohol after receiving the treatment. So this is going to be measured as a yes or no. So the no is going to be coded as a zero and the yes is going to be coded as a one. So no means that they drank alcohol, and yes means that they didn't drink alcohol. I know it's a little bit confusing, but think of it as abstinence from alcohol is what we're looking at. Did they stay uh, away from alcohol? Yes, they stayed away from alcohol. No, they did not stay away from alcohol. The main independent variable that we're interested in, the treatment in this made up data set, involves AA meetings, Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. And here, that's going to be measured as the average number of meetings that the client attended per week in the past year. So it's just the continuous number of, on average, how many um, meetings that they attend in the past year. So it's just some number. And then there are other variables that we're also going to look at in this made up data set. And in this table, I'm going to just list the variable real quickly and how it was measured. So we're going to look at depression and that was measured on a scale that goes from zero to 20 and every number in between, where zero means no depression and 20 means high depression. Self-esteem is, is measured similarly, except it goes from 0 to 15, 0 being no self-esteem and 15 being high self-esteem. Then we have marital status, where 1 equals married, 2 equals single or never married, and 3 equals divorced or separated. In this study, gender was measured in different ways, but only people only responded with, let's pretend, with zero equals male and one equals female, just for ease of data analysis. Family support was measured as zero equals no support, one equals some support, and two equals a lot of support. Okay, so these are the variables that make up this made up <laughs> uh, data set. Okay, now let's move on to SPSS. When we open up SPSS, we notice that there are uh, two ways that we can look at our data. Okay, so when I look at these numbers here, I want to just point out that these are the data in our data set. This comprises our data set, but how can we view our data? Well, I want to draw your attention to the left-hand corner on the bottom here. There's the data view, which is what we're looking at right now, and then there's also the variable view. So again, the data view and the variable view. The data view is where we can see our actual data, the numbers that our uh, participants in our study gave us. The variable view provides us information on our variables. So if you look up here, whoops, let me scroll up, you can see that the first row here says ID number. If I go back down here and click on data view, you'll see that ID number is our very first variable. So it matches up in that way. So let's just look at variable view for right now and in terms of what information this provides us. So here under name, we have the names of our variables. A few things to note about names in SPSS. For one thing, you'll notice that I have an underscore 
on in some of the variable names. For example, AA underscore meetings. And that is because SPSS doesn't allow spaces in between um, words in the names of variables. So for example, I could not type in AA meetings 2. I would get um, message here, variable name contains an illegal character, and that would be that space. So um, that's the first thing to note. Another thing to note is that there is a limit on the number of characters you can have. So it can't be too long. So for example, I can't write out um, depression scale 0 to 20 with 0 being no depression and 20 being some high depression. I will get a message saying the variable name is too long, please reduce the length. <laughs> okay, so that is why we have this column here called label so that we can provide that extra information to ourselves in order to know what the name of the variable is signifying. So that is why you'll see that sometimes in large data sets they might even just have um, labels, I mean variable names like Q1, Q2, Q3 standing for just the name of the, the question number and then they'll describe what that is over here, friend support. Okay, so, so that's why, because we're limited on what we can and cannot use. Oops, let me just get rid of... Clear. Okay, um, what we can and cannot use in terms of the, the names. Okay, so you have the name column here, you have the label, and as I mentioned, that's where you can provide information, more information on what the variable is. Here under type, if you hover your mouse lightly over in the right corner here and then left click, you will get this optional menu. And here you are allowed to select um, what type of variable it is, whether it's a numeric, comma, dot, notation, date, um, the most the dollar string. The most common is going to be numeric, date, or string. String refers to text. So sometimes you might have, you know, let's say uh, the variable race and you know the last one is other please specify and then someone specifies then you might have a category that is other here and then you might say okay this is going to be a string variable which then, if I go into my data view here, allows me to type in a, uh, um, letters, characters, instead of numbers. If I try to do that under a numeric variable, a variable that was defined as numeric, it would not allow me to do that. Okay, so however you define the variable, that is the only kind of information you can present in that, or input into that variable. Okay, so again, the most common types are numeric, dates, and strings or texts. And then um, width allows you to indicate um, how much room you want to allow for those characters, like how many uh, letters basically you will allow uh, for input into that uh, into that column. And then of course decimal spaces for, for your numbers if you have decimals, if you want to allow decimal spaces. Um, and then here's the width and here's the decimals. You can also input that information here. And again, you left, whoops, whoa. <laughs> You can left click, um, your, uh, you can hover your mouse on this uh, right side here and then if you left click you can move up or down. 
and select um, values. So the values column here is where you get to define the categories for your categorical variables. So remember I said depression is just some number from 0 to 20. So it doesn't have categories that I need to, to label. But something like marital status, which did have categories, I can actually label in SPSS. So if I left, if I hover my mouse again on that left side, I mean on that right side, left click, I'm given this menu option here, and I can go ahead and um, uh, tell SPSS what the number one means, what the number two means, what the number three means, etc. So that is how you would do it. You would enter in number one here, you would type in married and then you would click on add. Now I've already done that so it's already in here but if I hadn't this add button would be highlighted and I would just click on that and then once I was done with all three I would click OK and I would have that information here ready to go. Okay and then I would do the same for um, uh, gender and for family support. No support, some support, a lot of support. Okay? And then if I had missing data, okay, that is where this column is where that information would go. Now let's take a look at our data and see that we in fact do have some missing data. And how I know that is that there are dots where the numbers should be for client number four. Okay. Now typically there's um, sort of a tradition, if you will, that eights are used for missing data. And so what I might do here is I might add 888 to indicate missing data. Okay, so that I know when I see this, these 888s, that means that the data is missing. So I have to tell SPSS that for all of these, uh, this, um, these data, if it sees 888, to know that that means that it's missing. So the way I do that is again, I hover my mouse, left click, I get this menu option and I type in, I click on discrete missing values and I type in 888 and I say OK and then it changes it to 888 and I click that and it says OK. Now I could do that by hand for all of them or I can just right click on one of them, click on copy, then left click, hold, select all of them and then right click paste and then I can do all of them in one go. Okay, So now SPSS knows that when it sees 888s that that is missing data. Now another convention with regard to missing values is that um, generally speaking 8s signify missing values as I said, 9s um, are used for not applicables and sevens are used for don't knows or refuse to answer. Sometimes eights are used for refuse to answer as well, so that just depends. But in any case, that's why you see three spaces here, because those are the three main types of missing values. Okay, so that's for missing. Um, let's see. Columns, you don't have to worry too much about or alignment um, measure. So this is where, if, so if I left click here, you can see that it's asking what level of measurement your variable is at, whether it's ratio or scale, uh, ordinal or nominal. So abstinence, so ID number is technically scale, but it's not going to be used in the analysis anyway, so it doesn't matter. Abstinence is nominal because it's a yes-no question. Average number of meetings is scale. Depression is scale. 
um, self-esteem is scale, marital status is, mar um, is nominal, gender is nominal, and family support. Family support is actually ordinal because we're going from no support, some support, to a lot of support. So this is where you tell SPSS that. So that concludes all of the information that is provided in variable view. And then if we, cl if we click on data view, we can see, whoops, excuse me. <clears throat> we can see um, all of the, the variable names here at the top. And then each row is a person. So client number one, if I look at this one here, that tells me that yes, they were abstinent from alcohol. On average, they attended five AA meetings a week. Their depression score was a 12, which is, you know, out of 20 is in the medium range. They had pretty high self-esteem at 15 out of 15. They're married, um, they're male, and they have some family support. Okay, so that is how I would read person number one. Person number four is giving us a lot of missing data, so probably they're not going to be included in our analysis, especially because we don't have information on the outcome of interest, which was abstinence. So probably we'll just delete them from the analysis when that time comes. But in any case, that is the introduction by way of the different views. And then up here, we have our menu options. File is the same as you would find in um, Microsoft Office in terms of you know new and open and save and save as, etc. Some of this other stuff we'll go into in later videos um, in terms of edit, undo, redo, cut, copy. A lot of the features are similar to what is in um, what you're used to in Word and Excel, uh, etc but some of these other features like in data, transform, analyze, etc. we'll go over in different um, videos. But for now, that's it by way of introduction. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.